Is there anyone in this route with authority to treat with me? Not thou, Aragorn. It needs more to make a king than a rabble such as this. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Our right, greetings, weirdos. Welcome back to another Biff Me Two cast with Root Devil. Oh yeah, cringe, cringe, cringe. We're back on Udun for another two v two. Today we've got Radagast or Rad Three Gast as the goblins. And his partner, not that way, Moby, as men, and they will be facing Astera as Isengard, and Rico as the dwarves. Well, we all know who I'm rooting for already. <laughs> my favorite faction, and my least favorite faction. Oof. So maybe it balances out. So, the last 2v2 we did on Udun went on for quite an age, so we'll see... How this one go uh, this one goes on. No Mordor this time, but goblins are... Well, they'll make up the spam, basically. And it is actually quite fitting that the arch enemies of uh, dwarves and goblins will be uh, facing off against each other. So, Krabine for Isengard. We know with goblins have the bats. Rallying call for the dwarves. And someone hasn't picked a power. I think it's, yeah, it's Gondor, because this is Moby. Also, kudos for calling yourself Moby. It is so hard to resist singing the Born Identity theme song. I'll try my best, though. So, the Gondor spam has started in earnest. One Gondor soldier made. Actually, red Gondor soldiers that look like Sith acolytes. And one more on the way. An Urukai, which moved pretty damn fast. I think that was not a change in 1.9. Because the Urukai traveling across uh, the plains of Rohan. Need to get a nice speed boost. Dwarven Guardians are going up with the aggressive mineshaft, which I don't imagine will last very long against goblins, because uh, goblins with their poison blades, which somehow stacks against uh, buildings. Um, yeah, I don't imagine that this will last that long. He's managed to group them up nicely. Yeah, the aggressive mind shaft. I get what he was trying to do, but against goblins, yeah. Very, very, very little value there. Uh, maybe if these maybe if these guardians actually managed to get... Okay, well, he's got value, I guess. Gondor soldiers are going all the way across. In the last 2v2, they managed to double-team the bottom left, and it seems in this one they are double-teaming him too. And these Urukai, look at the speed! He's got Gondor archers just to try and uh, slow him down, but no, he's circled all the way around the base. And how much are these, Urukai? 300, okay. Hmm, wasn't 1.9? Didn't it have a different icon? I swear they did. Weird. Alright, so these Gondor soldiers are running around looking for mines that aren't there. Archery range is coming out. I like the way he's <laughs> made his buildings there, right next to his mine shaft. And, yeah, the early harass is always annoying in Biff Me Too. Especially for dwarves, because they're so slow. And always when you're attacking Munch, you have to attack from the rear. Because that way, when they pour out the uh, gate, you don't get cut down. There we go. So, more Gondor soldiers and Goblin archers, actually. So, clearly, they're working together. Because uh, Goblin archers will actually beat Dwarven Guardians. Even level 2 Guardians. So yeah, the Dwarves are firmly on the back foot. Urukai, I've only seen him make two units. Those, one, those first Urukai seem to have died, but now he's got Crossbowmen. And it is always busy. Phalanx are coming out, not sure why. Maybe they're predicting Spiders, or maybe Gondor Cav. There's no stables, but... Guess it doesn't hurt to be sure, unless he's predicting the early game Cave Troll. But then again, there's no fissure from the goblin side. All the action is outside the dwarven base. Always go for the best player. I get it. I get it. Oh, there are wargs. So wargs with their howl are great early game. Mobile and got damage. Or and have damage. And they'll be able to trample these goblins pretty easily. So I imagine a fissure will come out pretty shortly. 
If this builder doesn't make a fissure, I'll be very surprised. There it is, fissure. I'm so amazing, I amaze even my amazement. And doesn't that just sum up goblins? Look at them, hot on the heels of those warg riders. Warg riders could turn around and fight, but they wouldn't get any trample bonus because the distance would be too short. If do you think maybe maybe he's just trying to outrun the poison blades. Nope, he's stopping. I would have okay, now the poison has stopped. Dwarves are pushing in for another assault. Four battalions. Gondor has Boromir. Oh, kicking out old school. I like it. And the Tower Guards are out. Man, Tower Guards with the red look really nice. And Wargs are just picking up... Actually, two sets of Wargs. Hmm. It seems a Gondor player seems to be like not doing his best to really... Uh, deal with the Isengard harassment. He's sending all of his units down here, but... From the looks of things, uh, the Isengard player has actually been able to uh, take out a lot of the uh, Gondor players' farms. And I, I, I refer to the factions because I always forget the names. I'm one of those people. So, what was his name? You tell me his name! Moby. That's how would I forget? Alright, it's Moby. But yeah, it's not like a, an arrogance thing. I just gen genuinely forget people's names. So the Cave Troll is out from the Fissure. A versatile unit, and he's upgrading it probably to get uh, half trolls and another fissure. Okay, surprise at the second fissure. And the mighty Gorkil, who somehow survived an amazing battle, now has his mount and his leadership. Alright, three players in the mine. So that massive dwarven host that attacked the goblins got annihilated. Uh. Astera. I thought it was. I didn't want to commit to that. <laughs> Astera doing well with the uh, Warg Riders. But now Gondor's going into the fray. Debuffed by Krebine. But Boromir is in there. Krebine undone by Elven Wood, which doubles armor, remember. It isn't a percentage, it's just literal double. Which I guess is a percentage, but you know what I mean. So he's got double armor and Boromir. I don't think Boromir's in there. Oh no, there he is. He's leading them from the front. Whose attack speed is slower than ever. But with these two towers... Even tower guards at Elven Wood can't stand for long against a fortress. And two crossbowmen. So it seems that these early probing attacks have all failed. I am really impressed with the Astero though. He's got Lurts now, who if he switches to Cripple Shot... He's using Carnage right now, but he can switch weapon during Carnage, can't he? I don't think he'll need to though, because Wargs are hot on his heels, and Gorkil is there too! I would love it if they got the Gorkil kill early on. I would absolutely love it. He must have used it earlier. No, he has to be level 4 anyway. This is uh, me being a noob at 1.9. In Vanilla, I'm pretty sure he had Cripple Shot by default, but thankfully... The top tier Lurts has to wait until level 4. And actually, he has to wait till level 6 to get Pillage, which is funny, because that was also another early... He was just amazing in the base game. Like, they just gave him everything. I think because Isengard only had... Well, I guess they had 4 heroes, but... You know. So, the Dwarves and Isengard are counter-attacking. Devastation does stun units, although... How can you resist getting the eco from it? I'll never know. Especially since you didn't even need to freeze him though, which is kind of weird. Although he, I guess I guess he was able to get to trample the archers from that. So, um, goblins are actually launching a massive attack on the Isengard base though. Cave troll, half trolls, tainted land to buff his goblins, and Gloin in the middle of it saying, "Fuck you, this is my base." Actually, it's Isengard, but you know what I mean. So attacks going l like. Fast and wild here. Loose and fast with the attacks on enemies' bases here. Pretty early on in the game. And uh, they've all been... I don't know, they seem to have all equally taken lots of damage. The Azagard player probably took the least, but... Uh, seemed to have taken a big hit there from the uh, goblin attack, which seems to have evened it up. Gondor are now on their way back. Boromir... I can't remember if he died. It wouldn't be that hard to get him back. I heard a scream there. 
I don't think that was the cave troll. Did Gorkil die as well? I don't see any fat smack head lying on the ground, so... Maybe. And that is a massive clump of axe throwers. <laughs> Have you ever seen a bigger clump of axe throwers? Jeez. And half trolls. They don't care what kind of unit you are. You are going to get poked and you are going to die. And wild men on top. Oh no. The hobbits are there to counter it. So everyone got their tier 2 except for the Gondor player. Except for Moby. File of Galadriel, Frodo, file! Kill them while they're running away, come on! So, a minor win for the dwarves there. Gloin is level 4. Now he uses File of Galadriel. They'd already run away. Come on, Dwar come on, Gloin. Siphon that XP off your boys. He's got the slam. Will he use it here? It's not an autocast. And all those half trolls dead. But there are more on the way in typical goblin fashion. Let me just look over here. A sizable Gondor army on the way. No tier two. Well, I guess tower guards are tier two, but no Athelian rangers. Isengard are sending some units that way. He has enough... Well, well, I guess there are three towers. If he does attack, he could do a number on the fortress, but not destroy it. It's not really worth losing your army against uh, a half damage fortress. Bloin is still alive, but the, the goblins just keep on coming with their four production buildings. Axe throwers prioritizing the half trolls. Slam has been used, it's now an autocast. I am waiting for the next Dwarven Hero to come out. 10 points for the Isengard player. Maybe still waiting for his tier 2. Alright, most points belongs to the Goblins, which is uh, impressive to say the least. Level 5 half trolls, even more impressive. And that siege damage is incredible. Alright, Gondor are making their move. Double armor. One of Gondor's been used because they've been stunned. Lurch is in there doing his best to just cut through everyone. He now has. A cripple shot. And the hobbits decide to show up to kick some ass, which means maybe would have just got his tier 2. But as soon as they spawn, they've been trampled by wargs. Lurtz is actually pretty tanky, but Carnage is now one off. He seems to be stun locked by something. Um, don't know where Boromir went to, if I'm honest. There he is. I'm not sure that was the best use of Cripple Shot. He's on the he wasn't gonna retreat from there anyway. And that healing is is the Isengard Fortress been upgraded? Cause I know because I know some evil players. The upgrade on the fortress can heal units around them, sort of like uh, siege cakes for dwarves. Or houses of healing for men. Yeah, he's getting a healing aura around his fortress, which is really useful for evil factions, because that was always lopsided with... Um, um, yeah, only good factions getting the heal. Uh, Devastation is back, he's got enough for another tier 2, he probably could get a wild man. An awful lot, or awful lack of grey on the map. I think the dwarves have been doing well to kick their ass. So I think... No, the Gondor spam is amazing. Three more Gondor archers ready to meet these Uruk Pikes. Yes, they're not the strongest units, but hey. Quantity over quality seems to be Moby's plan. The goblins are just emerged, they're using the hill. They also have the Sigma Fire. Saruman of many colors is here, signaled by the lightning. Obviously, when Mordor gets the Witch King, they have the uh, Mogul sorcery up here, or the Mogul lightning, whatever. But Saruman, who's just amazing in the early game, 
Um, so much so that they actually moved Dominate to level 7. You don't want to lose Saruman. It's a lot of money down the drain if he's gone. Wizard Blast won't one-hit Tower Guards. I don't know if he'll waste it on Tower Guards. Preferably, I would... Yeah, that would do exactly that. I would get as much of the chaff as you can. Get the XP. And then Fireball! Oh, I would have Fireballed the Tower Guards, personally. Damn, Saruman's got some movement speed on him. Lurtz is in there with Carnage, but he got belly fought by Boromir. Honestly, I think they put that in just to just to uh, give Boromir a little extra oomph. I mean, you can just cancel out Carnage because of Boromir's knockback. That's really useful. The Watcher comes out. The Dwarven player now has Men of Dale, which he's just used. I'm focusing a lot on the war in the east. Goblin's got the Watcher. And Saruman got the levels, but pretty stalematey uh, affair there. Dwarves are being slightly pushed back. He did use his Men of Dale allies. He's actually in... Oh, there's another Watcher that came out. Oh, damn. They must have been the Isengard player. They've got their tier 3s out already. Gimli is on the field. How did I miss that? So both of them managed to... I mean, they took decent losses, but... They managed to get their best heroes out on the field, which is impressive to say the least. Gloin is now level 6. Four more levels. Let's hope we can get the auditory perfection that is Shatterhammer in 1.9. Gorkil's very low, but does he care? <laughs> Not with that face. I really like this Dwarven player. Anyone that can put up with Goblin Harass and all their speed is worthy of any respect. Gimli has his Leap and his Slayer. In fact, he's even more powerful in 1.9 because they gave him leadership. Which uh, gives him double armor. And to squeeze me, my Govan on YouTube, Drogoth came out. Well, the Gimli Axtra with Slayer would one-hit Drogoth, if I'm not wrong. I'm, I'm guessing Slayer, um... I'm guessing Slayer does uh, stack with the uh, Axtra. And it's so hard to know whose Hobbits these are. Is it Moby's? It is not Moby's. It must be the Dwarves. The Dwarves are such a useful... Uh, sorry, the Hobbits are such a useful summon because four heroes all with the unique abilities on a... what well, seems like a low cooldown. Beacon at the top there. Three goblins. A massive... Gondor army with a siege works. He's not messing around now. Not sure about the aggressive placement of the well. Fireball goes in. Wasted. Got half a battalion when he could have got the whole army. You just have to be patient. I know heroes can die fairly quickly if they're focused. But with Saruman, I mean right now, right now, you get power points out the wazoo if you were to fireball there. Alright. Shelob is here now, who is, as I've always said, a nuisance because she's so tanky, but two heroes wailing on her. There we go. Gimli's leveled up again. All of his units around him get double armor. Drogoth has the firewall. Axtro went in. Drogoth's going to have to retreat. I would really like it that instead of wing blasts, Drogoth just got uh, improved armor. Because it is a lot to spend on a flying unit, or a soul flying unit, because Witch King can... Witch King does have the same disadvantages, but he can go on the ground, so... That gets rid of that. But yeah, Drogoth, to get like an armor upgrade instead of Wing Blast. Or just add it in addition to Wing Blast. Would be really nice. Gondor and Isengard going at it! They were provoked by the Siege Works. Wizard Blast is out! Moby's doing well to maneuver around these wizard blasts. I mean, you can obviously know when it's coming. Oh, there it is. You can know when it's coming, obviously, but it doesn't mean it's the easiest thing to get away. If I was Moby, I would start getting some archers with fire arrows. Because he seems to be relying a hell of a lot on his wizard. I heard Aragorn. I'm not sure where he is, though. Boromir's just died. Where Aragorn must have been in this whole... I saw him for a split second, Aragorn. He is in there. Bombadil as well, just to put those... Uh, there he is. Level 3, used up Blade Master. Aggressive play from men here. I can see the dwarves attacking um, Radagast, but we're going to leave it for a bit. Heals come out. 
I think he's got everything focused on Aragorn, as you should. He does have Athelish, just in case. Saruman is very low, but he does have Wizard Blast. Saruman, come on, you can... You can nuke the last of his reserves. Cloudbreak from the Dwarves, saving his ally once again. There is no way out for Aragorn, who now has... Forge Blades on his pikes. And you can use Devastation to counter Elven Word. I'm not sure if it counters the effect. I don't think it does. You can say that they're still buffed, but... It does take out the trees in Elven Wood, so you do get the resources from it. So that's a helpful little tidbit there. Huh? And it, without... With just Devastation... Without Devastation, he's been able to get enough money to upgrade his troops and to get Saruman. The Gondor army fully defeated there. The Dwarves, which bought a few powers, are sieging the uh, Goblin base. I'm not sure if any heroes were lost. I was focusing on the other player. Oh, Gloin is... <laughs> that sound... Oh, no, there they are. That sound indicates that Gloin is very much alive. Dane with his infamous Waddle is there. Gimli is still somehow full health. Oh, they had a half. He's got his leap. He's got his slayer. Drogoth just got evaporated there. And uh, let's see. What has he got? He's got wild man almost back. Cave bats, tainted land, scavenger. Men of Dale allies is almost back. And he's got rebuild. He's got all of his tier one powers. There's the wild man to uh, disrupt his attack. I don't know, if Shake Foundation's back, which it is... He leapt in front of the wild man. I don't know, I would go in with Gloin quickly. Shake Foundation, the fissure, he can't produce any more half trolls. Men of Dale allies? I'm not sure what he's waiting for. He could go in right now. Let's quickly check on what's going on here. Fully upgraded Uruk Pikes! Boromir is back again, but no Aragorn. Using up a lot of money building these siege equipment. Actually, I guess they're only 600 now. Saruman's just upgraded them. One more level, he can dominate allies. Aragorn is back. Where did they get the resources? So Aragorn is a great hero killer. He can heal with um, uh, Athelus, but he is not the army killer until level 10. And Summon Lone Tower has... Shown its m worth by uh, provoking a retreat from fully upgraded Urukai. And goblins are fucked. No aid from Gondor will come this day. Three dwarven heroes on his doorstep. And these axe strollers, with all their might that are being buffed by tainted land now, are just destroying these towers and the fortress. The structure damage of axe throwers is still real boyos. Gimli with the slam is or with the slayer is coming in. And just when in doubt, just dwarf hero it out. Yes! Beautiful. I'm not biased with these guys in any way, shape, or form. Gondor has now just realized, oh fuck. I left the stove on. My teammate is gonna kill me. Leaving his base completely open. And Yeah, I just think the early game harass from the goblins wasn't sufficient enough. I think those Warg Riders really, really, like, because Warg Riders could just outrun Half Trolls and uh, Tower Guards. And I think uh, it was actually real smart of Isengard to go with Cav to just mitigate the, uh, uh, mitigate the Goblin Aggression. And it bought time for the Dwarves to get their heroes out and just do what they do best. And look at Aragorn, three Dwarven heroes living through a heal and an Athelas and he's still going. I was for sure thinking he was going to drop dead there. Oh, yes! This guy has my eternal respect. I will learn your name. It is Rico. Yes, Starship Troopers says hello. Level 10 Gloin. You don't fuck with the Gloin. I was wondering why Gorkil was GTFOing. <laughs> and now we know. So the Goblin player has Goblin Caves and a spider nest coming out. Seems to be toying with his opponent a bit. He could easily finish this. Moby seems to have called GG. Moby has been defeated. He seems to have left. No, Radagast. No, oh, because Moby was defeated. Radagast got the uh, control of the fortress. Okay, I knew I didn't get those names wrong. But yeah, pretty, pretty solid effort uh, on part of the Isengard and Dwarves. Their strategy of just holding on until we get our heroes out 
um, worked really well. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll uh, try and find some more interesting replays for you on hopefully different maps. But you know, you know these uh, these uh, game replays. I like to only be for Horizon and things like that. But I'll do my best to get some variety in the maps at least. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. See you next time. Bye bye.